Thank you very much for joining me on this Friday. Meteorologist Brian Shields, don't want to waste your time, so I want to get right into it. This here, a big surge maker. I want to get into that. This blob here, I've got some cautiously optimistic news to pass along on that. If you joined me yesterday, those steering conditions are holding. I'll dive into that. And we even had an earthquake yesterday evening in Jamaica, almost a, a five in magnitude. I've been keeping an eye on that. We haven't seen anything uh, really crazy since then, but I'm watching all of that across the uh, Caribbean. Here's this blob here. Now, over the last couple hours, it has not gotten better organized. Here's why. There's a little spin. You could kind of make it out right there. See that little swirl there? This is not tropical in nature, but that is providing a little extra of that wind shear and I mentioned that yesterday as well so with that we're not seeing any crazy development in the short term I do expect that though to eventually become a hurricane now the steering conditions I was watching yesterday with the European model those are holding and that is good news so let me show you what's going on here here's the Caribbean it's this blob that we're watching here and of course watching other areas as well watching this right here and I'm going to dive into this for the mid-Atlantic in a second I'll zoom down dive into all of this but this here is rolling into the mid-atlantic because there's a blocker right to the north of it this area of high pressure so this thing can't kind of curl out quickly it is lifting now into the mid-atlantic now with that said it is all tied together the weather on a regional and global scale is so tied together so let me take you on a time this is today now just moving forward as we work our way through the weekend this area will be developing through the weekend becoming a tropical depression then eventually a tropical storm. This is by the time we get into Sunday. Now, look what's happening here. This here, this area that moves into the mid-Atlantic of the United States starts to weaken. There's actually another little spin-up that kind of branches off from that over here. Point being, all of this action here keeps this area of high pressure, actually moves it a little bit more off to the east. It moves that blocker away. So what that does is it gives it an alleyway. It will give this an uh, opportunity to kind of funnel up into this direction and make a curve. Now, that would be good news for the Caribbean. I never wish this on anyone else. Don't wish it on Bermuda down the road or the Atlantic region of Canada, but I'm not seeing that either at this point. Let me take you further out in time. So we go from Sunday into next week, and you see by early next week, Monday, Tuesday, and then this is by the time we work our way into Wednesday. So this is the middle of next week, and you see this system developing. It'll be a tropical storm at that point. Still at this point, a safe distance from the Caribbean. And all that action out ahead of it up here is keeping this area of high pressure way the heck over there. Some years you get a strong area of high pressure and that drives everything right into the Caribbean. Of course, this pattern's also been keeping us too dry in the Caribbean. Everything's kind of been lifting around, but for the sake of this, which will become a strong system, that generally is good news. And then you see as we get deeper into next week, if this pattern holds, it would be making its curve in a powerful system here. Here is Bermuda. On this heading, it would still be well off to the east of Bermuda. That is down the road. I'll be watching that down the road. But the pattern I talked about yesterday with that European model is holding. I don't just look at the models. I look at the environment, and everything seems to be on track and in line with that. And with that said, the American model is shifting back to the European model. Yesterday was the other way around. Today, let me show you this. This is the American model. I'll zoom into this section in a moment. But this here, taking it out in time, this is as we work our way into the weekend. Sunday, just like the American model, I checked in on uh, really all of the models. I've been watching the Canadian, the German, pretty much in line with that curve scenario at this point. So you see here, here we are over toward uh, Montserrat, Antigua, Barbuda, Anguilla. By the time we get into Tuesday and Wednesday of next week, it starts to make its turn. Now, the American model by Tuesday has us really wrapping up into a tropical storm, about to become a hurricane, and it will by the time we get into the middle of next week. But at that point, it will start to make its curve. That would be some good news. And then keep an eye on Bermuda down the road. So on Tuesday, that's when we'll start to see a significant curve, and that's when we'll definitely, I'll know ahead of time, of course, but that's when we'll see uh, that more of a curve here all this action up here helps to draw this back to the north before it gets into the Caribbean. Can this change? Yeah, of course it changes. Weather does change, but at this point, I'm cautious, cautiously optimistic with this. And the models showing that as this heads almost due west, right toward the Caribbean, almost all of the models, here's the Hurricane Center model, starting to make that curve at the end. And there's good reason for this, and I showed you why. With all those systems up to the north, that keeps high pressure off to the east and it gives it that opportunity to turn. So this is the map I showed you yesterday. So take a look at this. 
the American model and the European model. This again yesterday. Now, I update it, look at today and look at that noticeable change, both the models right in line and making that quicker turn. So that is the difference that we're now seeing. We'll see how that holds. I do believe for the most part that is going to hold. Now, uh, Nigel, Nigel fell apart, of course, my friends in the UK, a lot of wind makers, a lot of rain makers this season as all of that's been wrapping into your direction, the remnants of Nigel nearby this weekend. So we have Ophelia and Philippe. Those are the next name, uh, next names on the list. And we're very close to the end of the list. This year, there's a supplemental list. In years past, you've gone to a Greek alphabet. This year, if we run out of names on this main list, there's actually a secondary list of names that we may uh, flip over to. So we'll see how that goes. Now, as promised, let me zoom to this. Uh, I was scratching my head for the last couple days why they weren't going with uh, warnings for this, watches for this, and not classifying this system because this is a huge player. And that always, I do this channel for safety, and that was very alarming for me, uh, especially knowing the Chesapeake Bay and the Delaware Bay uh, very much so. I spent some of my early career up there doing uh, weather. As these systems wrap into the Outer Banks, and this is by tomorrow morning, you can see here tropical storm close to hurricane conditions. It just wraps up the water. It doesn't really have anywhere to go. You're, I'll show you the winds in a second, but it brings in that strong flow across the uh, Chesapeake uh, tidal area as you get back toward uh, uh, parts of southern New Jersey as well. There is going to be a surge, so this will lift in a strong tropical storm. And this forecast hasn't even been hard. That's one of the other reasons I, some, some systems are very difficult. Uh, this one's been very on track as uh, the most part, but again, it has not been well advertised. By Saturday, yes, some of that rain lifting up toward New England, way down the road. I don't see this as a factor for, for say, Canada. It is going to start to break apart. You see, again, as I showed you earlier, when I was tracking that other system off the coast of Africa, kind of splits apart. Another little area of low pressure will develop out here. This is by the time we get into uh, Sunday morning. Now, let me show you the winds with this. Now, I have uh, try to cover as many folks as I can, kilometers an hour and miles per hour. So either way, got you covered. This white shading, those are winds uh, roughly around 50 miles per hour. Little red sneaks in there as well. We're going to see some gusts to about 70 to 75 miles per hour. Uh, close to hurricane force gusts with this moving in right near, you can see New Bern, Outer Banks here. You get the Lost Colony up here. You get over toward Kitty Hawk. Here's uh, Virginia Beach. And this is the issue. As this works in, it just throws the winds uh, in, in just that flow and throws the water uh, back through uh, New Jersey, southern New Jersey. You get over toward Cape May, watching uh, the Delaware Bay and then the Chesapeake. And there is going to be that surge. There'll be some of those communities right along the coast that take on water. That is going to happen with this system, with this flow, kind of a longer duration system. For a couple days, you have that onshore flow so that water just keeps piling up. And then this will lift in and overall they'll be weakening by even late on Saturday. We'll see some stronger winds, even parts uh, you get over toward Uniondale as you get over toward Long Island, some gustier winds. But still, look at that in New Jersey, deep into tomorrow night, still that onshore flow. That, of course, is an issue back through the Delaware Bay and again as we work our way uh, back through the Chesapeake. So that surge upwards of five feet right in here, you get north in the Chesapeake, closer to the uh, Potomac, surge up to about three feet. And there, there's going to be that persistent flow in southern New Jersey. Warnings are out with this. Please, again, listen to your local officials because some communities simply need to be away from the water in this event. Again, it was not well advertised. I'm not sure why, um, uh, but with that said, it's going to be a big problem up here with the water just on the angle that this takes. And we've seen that uh, in the history of these systems. They don't need to be a powerful hurricane to cause uh, significant issues. Now, we got this blob moving off the coast here, not tropical in nature. Been watching Guatemala, parts of Mexico overnight. We've had some showers and storms in Venezuela overnight. How about Trinidad and Tobago? Finally, with that rain chance going up, we've had some rain around. We need to get some rain. Isolate up flooding an issue, but southeastern sections of the Caribbean, yeah, it's been wet at times. I've been going back and forth with you in the uh, comments. A little surge of moisture coming in from Venezuela near Guyana and Suriname, just kind of feeding up to the north. So even Barbados, St. Vincent, the Grenadines, St. Lucia, spotty showers, Grenada, we've got a decent chance uh, for us 
today. So watching for some uh, much needed uh, shower activity. And you see it here, this is later today. See some of the green Guyana, Suriname, that chance of rain. Spotty showers, uh, Cuba, hit or miss. Cayman Islands, Jamaica, watching out for a hit or miss shower storm. Bahamas, northern tier of the next two days, a better chance of rain and storm. Central America, kind of that scattered variety, but still tomorrow, Eastern uh, Caribbean, watching out for some of the showers and storms. Puerto Rico, generally the afternoon stuff. This is as we work our way later into our Saturday. And uh, Turks and Caicos, by the way, a bit drier. It's going to be really, uh, as you work our way into the Bahamas, northern Bahamas, a better chance of some rain. Sunday, spotty showers and storms, of course. I'll be watching off to the east to see how that system makes its curve away from the Caribbean. If it doesn't, for some reason, if it changes, I'll let you know right away. We get back here again. Most of the action here, I mentioned that's not tropical. Things that have been developing and it hasn't been a whole lot on the eastern Pacific side have been well away from land. So look at that rain chance. Isolated areas of flooding. Heads up over toward Trinidad for today. Rain chance stays elevated the next few days in Barbados. A 50% chance. 50% chance the next couple days as we work our way into St. Lucia. Rain chance higher today. Not all day in Grenada, but that higher 60 to 70% chance of wet weather. Elevated 60% chance. St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Jamaica scattered showers and storms, a 40% chance. 40% chance for today in Belize, 30% chance for tomorrow, and a 40% chance the next few days in Dominica. More of the moisture is to the south, but still that chance. St. Kitts and Nevis and Montserrat, 30% chance right through the weekend. Antigua and Barbuda, Kind of limited today, small chance of a shower, 20% chance, 40% chance of the mainly afternoon storms the next two days in uh, Puerto Rico. U.S. Virgin Islands, British Virgin Islands, 20 to 30% chance the next two days, 30% chance of the next couple in Anguilla, 50% chance today in the Bahamas. As I mentioned, though, northern Bahamas, better chance of rain. 30% chance today, St. Martin, Ceiba, and Stacia, passing shower possible. 40% chance, the Yucatan of Mexico. 30% chance today in the Cayman Islands. Up to a 40% chance, though, on Sunday. 30% chance holding today, tomorrow. Turks and Caicos, only a 20% chance on Sunday. Some spotty showers and storms the next couple days in Haiti. Dominican Republic today, a 50% chance, a 40% chance through the weekend. Not a lot in Aruba and Curacao. Rain chances up slightly. Bonaire as well. It's not super high, mainly dry, but there is at least a very slight chance of a shower around. 40% chance today in Guadeloupe. We get back toward Martinique the next couple days. 40% rain chance, 30% on Sunday. Elevated chance of rain in Costa Rica. It has gone down some though overall. 50% chance northern Venezuela today and tomorrow. Pretty active. And we've been more active in Guyana and Suriname, which we need. I know not all of us are getting the rain. It's not a big shield of rain. Uh, it's more the way of scattered showers and storms. So hopefully some different spots can get some of this rain. So this new system headed toward the Caribbean looks to curve before the Caribbean. That is the most likely scenario at this point. Watching those tropical storm impacts in the mid-Atlantic of the United States. There will be significant flooding in spots of the Chesapeake. Watching over toward uh, the Delaware Bay. So watching those areas of flooding there. And some isolated flooding possible. Southeastern Caribbean with that uptick in the rain. And I'll keep an eye on uh, Jamaica and of course everywhere to see if we have any aftershocks or additional earthquakes. I'll be monitoring that throughout the day. Hurricane season goes through the end of November. Thank you for being part of this channel. Please be safe if you're dealing with that system moving up toward the mid-Atlantic. Keep me posted on what you got going on where you are. I'll try to get to those comments throughout the day. I hope you have a wonderful day ahead.